Today we're going to talk about the contactor. When we're done, you should be able to describe the different parts of the contactor. You should be able to describe how the contactor works. You should also be able to identify different types of contacts by their schematic symbol. And our final thing is you should understand how to check a contactor. Here we see a schematic symbol of a contactor. A contactor is broken up into three basic parts. We have the line side. This is where we're going to bring the power into the circuit. We have the load side. This is where we're going to transfer the power to. And we have the coil. The coil is used to energize this contact. Inside of this contactor, we see two contacts. This is the symbol for a contact. This is a normally open contact. When we energize it, it's going to close. That's the symbol for a closed contact. Here we can see the coil. In this example, this is how I'm depicting the coil. These are other ways that we can see the coil depicted, depending on who's drawing the circuit. The bigger the circuit gets, the more likely you're going to see something like this, uh, CC for contactor coil. Here we can see schematic symbols for three different types of contactors. This first one is a single pole or a one pole contactor. And that's because there's one contact inside of it. This next one has two contacts or two poles. This is a schematic symbol for a two pole contactor. This one is a three pole contactor. We find three pole contactors a lot in commercial and industrial applications. Here we can see several examples of contactor. This is a single pole contactor. You can see that this side just has one solid bar. This side has a little switch that's going to go up and down. That's always activated by the coil down here at the bottom. The coil can either be 24 volts or 120 volts or even 230 volts. They're usually going to have a label on here. Uh, this one's kind of messed up, so we can't really see that. But I do have some other examples. Here's another one. This is a brand new one. This is a single pole contactor as well. This one has a cover on the top where the contacts are. So let me take that off. And here you can see, once again, we have the contact on this side. But on this side, we just have a bar that runs straight across. This is a single pole contactor. We have a label that shows uh, what kind of voltages and what kind of amperage we can draw. It also tells us the voltage of the coil. Okay, and this one is a 24 volt coil. Here we can see a two pole contactor. With the two pole contactor, we have two separate poles. They're both going to be uh, energized at the exact same time. They're both going to close. And when it closes, it's going to send stuff through contact one and contact two over to the load side. It really doesn't matter which side you designate as line side and which side is load side. Here we can see an example of a three-pole contactor. This is the type that we often find on three-phase equipment. 
Here you'll see that they have L1, L2, and L3. Those are for your three lines coming in. So this is our line side. This is our load side, T1, T2, and T3. T's are the terminals. These are the, the motor and the compressor terminals that you're going to hook the power to. Uh, once again, we have a coil, and the coil, when energized, it'll go down. And it'll short out each one of these contacts. On this particular one, the coil connectors are right here. On all these contactors, you'll see that there are multiple places where we can hook up wires. Uh, for example, here you can see there are four different spots that we can hook up wires. Here we can see a schematic diagram of a small circuit. Whenever we're talking about a small circuit, we usually show the schematic symbols that we just took a look at. For example, in this one, there's our contactor. This is a two-pole contactor. In this particular circuit, this one needs 24 volts. As long as we're within about 10% of that voltage, what's going to happen is that will cause this contactor to close. Okay, so both contacts will close at the same time. To get to 24 volts, we're using a transformer to step down the voltage, and then the switch will when we close the switch, it will send the power to here, which will close the contacts. And that will make the lamp light up. Here we see a ladder diagram. In a ladder diagram, they're going to take the schematic symbol that we've seen and they're going to break it up into its primary parts. For example, uh, we just saw a circuit that had a 24 volt coil. Well, here's the transformer that changed the voltage from high voltage to low voltage. So down here, we're going to see the letter CC. CC is the contactor coil. You may have a hard time seeing that. Let's blow that up, make it a little bit easier to see. Okay. CC, that's our contactor coil. When we energize that coil, it's going to cause contact one and contact two to close. There's contact one. Over here is contact two. Now once again, it may be a little bit difficult to see. So there's contact one. There's contact two. So remember, when we're looking at a small circuit, they're just going to show the entire symbol. When we look at a ladder diagram, or a bigger circuit, they're probably going to break it up into its smaller parts. In this circuit, we can test out the contactor. Our line voltage comes in right here. You can see that we have 115 volts. When we go to the load side, we have zero volts. And right now on our coil, we also have zero volts. When I turn on the switch, it's going to make the contactor go down. Watch right here, watch the contactor. The contactor goes down. When it does, once again we had 115 volts here. Now we have 115 volts on the other side. The reason that we get the 115 volts on the other side is because the voltage on the contact actually made that contactor go down. Here you can see we have 26 volts. So the 26 volts is what makes that electromagnet which pulls down the contactor and allows power to go through.
Another check that we can do is we can check right across each contact. Here's contact number one. If I check from one side to the other, I should get zero volts, and I do. If I check on the other side, on contact two, from line to load, I also get zero volts. That's what I should have. Anytime you start getting a voltage drop across that contact, it means that it's pitted and it needs to be replaced. Anytime that you have more than about half a volt on the high efficiency systems, you're gonna need to change that out. Uh, on, a normal, on a normal system, if you get over about a volt, volt and a half, it's time to change these out. Uh, right now you can see this one's in good shape. Got zero there, got zero there. Another test that we can do on a contactor to verify it's good or not is to disconnect all the power and do an ohms check. So I'm going to turn this off. I've disconnected the power. When you do an ohms check though, you have to remove it from the circuit. So I'm going to have to disconnect everything that's hooked up here. And I want to start by taking a look at our resistance of our meter leads. Right now you can see this is not a very good set of leads. I've got about 12 ohms of resistance here. I'm going to measure from contact one line side to contact one load side. When I press down on the contactor, I should see about 12. Okay, and I've got a little bit more than that. Okay, that means that most of our power we send through is going to go right through. Anytime that is higher than your meter lead readings, you've got a loss of resistance. I mean, loss of voltage because you have added resistance. I'm going to do the same thing here on contact two. See this one, got a little bit more resistance than the last side. So this side's got a little bit more wear and tear than the other side does. Once again, once you start getting um, more than a couple of ohms, you really should change out the contactor. On the coil itself, coils in general on this type of a contactor range somewhere from about 10 to 20 ohms, normally. A good safe bet is as long as you're in double digit numbers, you're probably good on your coil resistance. So let's check that. So when we check this, uh, we got a resistance of 21. Okay. If we would subtract our 12 that we started with, we're down to 9. So, you know, it's a little bit lower than I'd like to see it. Uh, we could possibly have a short there, but I don't think so. Uh, when a contact is open, it should read OL. When it's shorted, it should be as low as possible. Um, see, now I got 10, so my resistance of my leads must have went down. Yeah, I got less ohms in my... Okay, so I got 10. So we got about 10 ohms on that coil. So 10 or 11 is pretty typical for this type of a coil.